Hey guys, I'm Jason White, and this is my channel, Jason's Weird Reads, and this is my plans for 2019, what I hope to read. Full disclaimer, I, uh, I'm very much a mood reader, <laughs> so there's a chance I won't get to any of these books, but uh, I'll I sort of doubt that I'll probably get into at least, I'll, I'll hopefully read them all, let's just say that. Now, uh, I've been in a, a big, pretty big fantasy kick lately, and uh, so there's a couple of fantasy books in here, but most of them are actually horror. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to start off with the poetry, actually. Um, this is a book of horror poetry. It's by Stephanie M. Widowich, I think is how you pronounce her name. These are uh, stories about asylums and madness. Or not stories, poems. And uh, I was reading some of her poetry online, I think, and it was really quite good. So sh this is like, she has like four or five books of poetry out there. She writes a lot of poetry. I'm hoping to, to enjoy this book and get the rest. So that's uh, Hysteria, A Collection of Madness by Stephanie M. Widovich. And uh, I read Dane Cobain's, uh, the first in his Leapfold series, Driven in the summer and I really enjoyed it. It was a good cozy mystery and so I wanted to see what he would do with poetry. I know he writes a fair amount of poetry too. This is his uh, collection of poetry. Um, Eyes like lighthouses when the boats come home. And I've had this book pretty much since the summer, uh, maybe early September. I bought it soon after reading Driven and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what he does with this style of uh, writing, it seems like I, I, you know, I've one thing I'll do with poetry books. I'll just open it up and read ram. Like I will read the book from beginning to end, but first I'll just read random poems, just to you know try to get a feeling for this for uh, what the author is trying to do. And uh, it seems like he's got a pretty interesting thing going on, some experimental stuff. And so I'm I'm looking forward to that. Right, Gillian Flynn. I was introduced to her through her HBO series adapting her first novel, Sharp Objects, and I fell in love with that series, man. I uh, it, it swallowed me up and <laughs> spit me back out. And so, as you do, I went and read the book. And honestly, like I loved the book. It was really good, but I did like the series better. I, I just felt that, and, and Gillian Flynn was, I believe, she wrote uh, one or two episodes and she was an executive producer, so she was really involved in the making of it. So I don't think it's a dig against her or anything. So don't get mad at me. <laughs> I think uh, we tend to like what we see first. And it's not a dig at the book either. It's, uh, it's a great book. Um, what I liked about the series was uh, that it added so many la more layers. They made it more haunted, in a sense, without it being a ghost story. And, but in a sense, it is kind of a ghost story. It's hard to explain. You have to see it. Maybe you'll understand what I mean. I'm probably not making any sense, but have, having experienced uh, Gillian Flynn with sharp, that sharp object journey I took, I decided to move on to Dark Places, and I've been wanting to read this uh, since early fall. And I just haven't really gotten to it yet. It's a pretty big book. It's 400 and, oh, 530 pages around there. And a lot, of, a lot of her fans, at least on booktube here, say that this is her best out of the three books she's written. I know that she's struggling writing her fourth novel because of the success from, from of Gone Girl. She's working a lot in television, too. But I, I've heard that she is writing uh, another book. And I, can un well, I can't understand the story. I can only imagine and understand in that way the stress she's going through because Gone Girl just blew up it went to the moon and uh and trying to top that would be impossible and i think that's that's where she along with george r r martin are kind of stuck they're afraid that whatever they put out is just going to be called shit because because people love gone girl so much which is funny because a lot of uh, booktubers here on youtube don't feel that's her strongest work. They say that this is, so we shall see. Because I'm going to read Gone Girl as well. I want to see the movie adaptation, because I hear it's pretty good. All right, uh, some fantasy here. Elliot Brooks, she has a channel here. I watch her a lot. She uh, 
she has similar tastes to fantasy as I do. Um, a lot of the books that she loves anyway are books that I love, so I trust her opinion on many things. And she's coming, she's coming out with a book in March, I believe. It's called Peace and Turmoil. I'll put a picture of it right there. And uh, I'm kind of excited to read it because, uh, well, she's been doing a lot of work promoting this book and uh, cr trying to create a buzz around it, and it just seems like a really interesting story. So, anyways, uh, I'm getting off track here. She uh, She's organizing a year-long read-along involving two authors and two uh, series. One is Brandon Sanderson and his Cosmere universe, and I, I'm planning on participating in that on and off, because I've read a lot. I've, I've read a fair amount of Brandon Sanderson, and uh, I don't know if I'm going to do any rereads. But the books I haven't read, I certainly want to read. But the second author, uh, Andre Sapkowski, and his uh, Witcher series. This is the very first book. This is where they say to start, and I believe this is the first book that they're doing for the buddy read. And I can't wait to uh, read this. One reason is because uh, uh, Geralt, he is a witcher. And basically what he does is he goes from town to town killing their monsters for them. It's uh, very much a dark fantasy. It mixes elements of horror and fantasy. The first story in this, which I have read, is actually a vampire story. Where he goes and he has to kill a vampire. And these vampires are badass, man. Anyways, so this is the first book. It's a collection of short stories, and there's another collection of short stories after this. And uh, I was told from a fair amount of sources, especially here on BookTube, that you should really start with the short stories because um, you're going to need to learn who the characters are and all that. And besides, they're they're just as good as the novels, if, if not better, I don't know. But... Uh, so yeah, if if there was like science fiction, science fiction elements in this, it'd be like the perfect book for me. All my, <laughs> all my favorite genres in one. All right, and now this book. This is uh, this entire series, I believe, has been winning Hugo Awards every time a new book is released. That's the fifth season by N. K. Jemison. I really like the idea of this book. It's basically about the end of uh, the world. One thing I don't know is if it takes place on Earth or if it's a fantasy world. Um, like I said, I really do like coming in blind, but uh, I'm pretty sure, judging by the map that's inside, that it's its own world, its own universe. There's a lot of hype going on about this book and uh, a lot of people talking about how good it is. And uh, there's one thing that kind of... Eh, makes me ick about it is that it tends to slip into second person every so often and I'm sure there's a reason for it I, I don't hate second person I only hate it I if somebody if, if the second person is being used as like it's telling you a story rather than it's telling you what you're doing then I'm okay with it I just don't like uh, you walk into the room I'm like no I'm I'm sitting here in my chair reading I'm not walking into any room I know it's a bit of a nitpick, but it, it's just something that annoys me. So I don't think she goes into second person in that way. I was sort of uh, looking at the uh, first chapter. I didn't read the first chapter. I was just looking at it, and it seems like they're, the narrator is sort of telling you a story. So every once in a while, they break the fourth wall and uh, talk to you. I don't know. I'll get to it, and I'll let you guys know. Uh, I'm hoping actually to read this one pretty soon because it's it's itching at me the most other than the one book I am reading. Sort of a tie, actually, uh, between Blood Song by Anthony Ryan and the fifth season. I, I read the first chapter of this, and it's... I love the writing of this book. It's it's not poetic or anything, but it it's the type of writing that just takes... And it's not simple writing either, but it takes little effort to understand and absorb what you're reading. It's uh, it just flows. It has really great flow, and uh, so yeah. So I we'll we'll see which one wins. I guess by the end of the month. Moving on to the horror. Now this is just sort of like a cut down list because I have a lot of horror I got to get to. And uh, yeah, so this one. Some of them are really short, so they should be easy. 
this one is Blanky by Pat, uh, Keelan Patrick Burke. Now this one is a story about, uh, it's just a father's grieving story over, he's grieving over the loss of his daughter and uh, some creepy things start to happen in his grief. I always love these types of stories because the supernatural elements often resemble or are being used as symbols for the grief that uh, the person is going through. And uh, this one might be a tearjerker for me <laughs> because ever since I became a father, you know, stories about losing your child to death really get me. I mean, they really get to me. It, when before our before my son was born, I didn't give a sh you know, I didn't care. It, it's not that I didn't care, it's, it didn't affect me. But now it does. I guess that's the the joys of being a parent. But anyways, uh, Blanky, Keelan Patrick Burke, really looking forward to that. Um, in my earlier videos, I was really uh, hyping up uh, John Paget's, uh, what's it called here, Secrets of Ventriloquism. I love that uh, anthology, especially on the audiobook. If you haven't picked that up yet, definitely do so. It's very, it's read by the author, but the author is actually a ventriloquist, so that should be enticing. It's very, very dark stories. Um, and anyways, he came out with this uh, limited edition, signed and numbered, The Broker of Nightmares. I had to pick this up because I love John Paget's writing so much. And I, I've showed this book off before. There's art inside. It's a very beautiful book. It's by uh, Nightscape Press. Uh, there's some really phenomenal art in here. If you can find it, they're all sold out now. They're all gone. But if you can find a copy somewhere, I highly suggest you get it. Um, I don't know what it's about, and I don't want to know anything about it at all. I think it has something to do with drugs. The back says a dream for a drug. He writes really weird, really dark fiction, and I uh, can't wait to get to that. <laughs> All right, Kill River. This has gotten some buzz on uh, on BookTube, and this is just a. Uh, it's pretty much just a slasher movie, in book form, and that's why I want to read it. I think I'm going to wait until the summer to read this, though, because it's very much a summer type story. They go to a, an abandoned water park, and uh, I believe it's summertime when they go, and of course it's a bunch of kids, and uh, they start getting knocked off one after the other, and it takes place in the summer of 1983, so I, uh, I am really looking forward to this. This book I got for my birthday and I was going to pick it up right then, but something else got in the way. I haven't read the author yet, but I really plan to, and it's We Sold Our Souls. Uh, you probably heard about this, especially if you're into horror. And if you're one of my horror uh, channels that I often watch, then you've probably already read it. So you know that it's about uh, uh, this a female guitarist who uh, who was in a band, and the band kind of broke up, but the singer, he went on to become really big and famous and they later learn that that singer sold the rest of his band's souls in order to get there and uh, and now they have to fight to get their souls back or at least the contract to their souls so this, this sounds like a lot of fun Grady Hendrix is uh, is blowing up through the horror realm he writes fun very fun type of horror stories and that can be a favorite especially if you're going through a bit of a dark time so I'm gonna I'm gonna read that hopefully fairly early on uh, these two anthologies by Crystal Lake Publishing I've been trying to read forever especially this one welcome to the show it's edited by, uh, by Matt Hayward and by Doug Moreno and uh, <clears throat> I talked to Matt Hayward about this anthology in uh, the Darkness Dwells podcast. I'll put a link down there. And this is basically, um, it's sort of a themed, well, it's definitely a themed anthology, but the theme centers around one uh, place, and it's like a bar where bands play. That's all I know about it. And uh, there's stories in here by Brian Keane, John Skip, Brian Smith, uh, Robert Ford, uh, Max Booth III, Glenn Rolfe, uh, Matt Hayward, 
Mary San Giovanni, uh, Kelly Owen, Jonathan Jans. Uh, there's so many more. Uh, Adam Caesar. Those are two of my favorite latest or newest authors anyway. Jonathan Jans and Adam Caesar. And you know what? There, there's none of their books here, but I plan on reading both them. There's some books by Adam Caesar I really, I'm really itching to get to. Um, I haven't ordered them yet or gotten the ebooks yet, but I plan to. And same with Jonathan Jans. He has a couple of books coming out I really want to read. And the second book by Crystal Lake Publishing is Fantastic Tales of Terror. Now, all these aren't exclusive to this anthology. Some of them are older. I think maybe all of them are. But they're like modern classics. And uh, like Bubba Hotep by Joe R. Lansdale's in here. I've never read the book. I've seen the movie and I enjoyed it. But I really, really want to read that story. Um, I love Joe R. Lansdale. And uh, there's a lot of other really good authors in here. Uh, let's go through the table of contents, even though I have already. There's stories by Tim Wagoner. Oh, the introduction's done by Tony Todd, Candyman. He's the guy who played Candyman. So that's pretty awesome right there. Um, Tim Wagoner, Mercedes Yardley, Kevin J. Anderson, Elizabeth Massey, Bev Vincent, Stephanie Whitevich, who I just talked about with her book of, uh, book of poetry, uh, Christopher Golden, Richard Chismar, uh, John Palisano, Lisa Morton, Jess Landry, Jonathan Mayberry, David Wellington, Bentley Little, uh, Mort Castle, Jeff Strand. I just read a story by Jeff Strand actually in this anthology, which I'm going to be talking about very soon. It's so funny. So funny. Not the anthology, but Jeff Strand's story in it. All right, and the last in the list here, uh, there's been a lot of raving about this book, and I just love the idea. I might save it for Halloween. I was supposed, I was wanting to read it for this Halloween, but uh, I didn't get to it, of course. And it's Kill Creek by Scott uh, Scott Thomas. It's about a four writers who spend the night in a haunted house and uh, something follows them home. That's all I'm going to say about that because that's pretty much all I know. And uh, it sounds, it's, it starts on Halloween, like they do it on Halloween night or something like that. And uh, that just sounds like, uh, that sounds like the bee's knees. <laughs> Anyways, I can't wait to get, I might get into it sooner, who knows. So those are all the books that are really pulling at me right now and I want to stress that uh, I want to read more Adam Caesar and Jonathan Jans. I loved uh, Video Night by uh, Adam Caesar. I, that book was just so much fun. And Jonathan Jans, I read like three books by him this year, making the total of Jonathan Jans books I've read now up to four. And uh, I can't wait to read more of his stuff. He's he <laughs> He's got some interesting characters sometimes. I mean, his characters are normal for the most part, but I think every book's had at least one kind of wonky character, and that that's always a fun thing for me. Um, he's also very violent and gory, and uh, he uses the sex trope that I don't really like, but he at least does it in a creative way. At least with uh, his the Siren and the Spectre, I found that there was a, an interesting little uh, twist to the whole sex and horror trope. So, uh, that's it. I hope that uh, I get to most of these books, if not all of them. And uh, I'm going to stop it here because I've rambled on way too long. So you, please, keep being creative, and we will catch you in the next video.